Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachah Kodash. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's true name in ancient Hebrew, who the world anyway calls God, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, who the world anyway calls Jesus Christ. And the Rachah Kodash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Truth that gives us the inspiration to speak this word, to make our call and election sure, believing on the gospel as it is written. Double honest of the apostles of Great Millstone, who I learned the truth from. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect, the men, women, and children that are predestined to receive salvation and to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel. So uh, just coming back at you with another, uh, you know, prophetic news update. <clears throat> this is going into the famine, all right, and the famine of food, okay, because you you do have uh, the famine of the word that is uh, also, uh, uh, you know, happening you know, right now, where you have a lot of men <clears throat> that are unable to go out on the highways and the byways to speak. But the Lord also speaks about the actual famine of bread and water, all right, of food. And that's something that, um, you know, if you are paying attention, you know, we're seeing that that is, uh, you know, coming into those times that, that we're in right now. And a famine doesn't necessarily mean, you know, a lack of food, but it's, uh, you know, a lack of the lack of ability to to get food, okay, <clears throat> and that's what you happen having having happen to all these uh meat these meat processing plants. All right, so I'm gonna read this article came out last night from CNN Business says the food su supply chain is breaking. Tyson says as plants close. Says Tyson's food is warning that millions of pounds of meat will disappear from the supply chain. As the coronavirus pandemic pushes food processing plants to close, leading to product storages in grocery stores across Salak, leading to product shortages in grocery store stores across the country. OK, so this is Tyson. All right. Which, you know, you know, people that goes into the grocery store, you, you see Tyson products. It's very popular um, uh, brand. But it's saying that millions of pounds of meat will di will disappear from the supply chain, meaning from these stores, leading to product shortages in grocery stores across the country. So you're going to start seeing these uh, shelves that used to be uh, have meat in them is going to be more and more scarce, man. OK, which that's also going to lead unto a hyperinflation of the of the prices of these products, because the more the, the less of, of a supply, the higher the demand is going to be and the higher the demand the higher the prices of those uh, products are going to get, man. So it's going to be it's going to be a, a lot of uh, uh, looting, a lot of uh, rioting, okay. And it's going to be f uh, food shortages too, aka famine. It says the food supply chain is breaking. Wrote board chairman John Tyson in a full page advertisement published Sunday in the New York Times, Washington Post, and Arkansas Democrat uh, Gazette. U.S. farmers don't have anywhere to sell their livestock, he said, adding that millions of animals, chickens, pigs, and cattle will be depopulated because of the closure of our processing facilities. There will be a limited supply of our products available in grocery stores until we are, uh, until we are able to reopen our facilities that are currently closed, Tyson wrote. Limited supply. So what is that going to lead to? A food shortage, which is going to lead... So a hyperinflation, okay? Hyperinflation of food. So now your 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 three packs of a, a chicken breast that usually cost seven dollars, now that's going to cost twelve dollars, thirteen dollars, okay? Or hyperinflation, it could cost you know three hundred times that, so it can be twenty one dollars, okay? You see what happened over there in Venezuela, okay? And and Venezuela is not not Babylon the Great, man. Babylon the Great. Has a has a judgment that no other country, no other nation, has ever had or has ever will have. So you see things that's happening in other countries. Just magnify that by you know a uh, 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 an exponential number, man. And that's what's going to take place over here in the streets of Babylon. All right, it says um, Tyson Food which uh, employs roughly 100,000 workers, closed its pork plants in Waterloo, Iowa, and Logansport, Indiana last week so that workers in those facilities could be tested for the virus. 
the Waterloo plant closure came after weeks of public pressure. Production had already slowed because many of its 2,800 workers have been calling out sick and local health authorities linked the Tyson plant to 182 cases, nearly half of the country's total. So like nearly half of the county's total. So uh, that one plant, okay, pork uh, plant had half of the uh, total amount of uh, cases in, 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 the, in the county of Waterloo, you see? So it says CNN recently spoke to three employees who worked in the facility who expressed ongoing concerns that not enough was done to protect them from COVID-19. One worker said that the practice that practicing social distancing inside the facility was nearly impossible to do. You see, so now, you know, once again, man, and, and a lot of people are not paying attention to what's happening. All right? A lot of people are not connecting the dots, not seeing how seeing how these are going to have trickle effect, domino effects, and it's going to start affecting people personally, man. People are still, especially Jake's, man, they're still worried about being able to go to bars, being able to, you know, have fun and, and do this and that, still still being in that folly spirit, man. Well, all the while, this hell just is happening all around you, man, okay? All hell is breaking loose all around you, but uh, people are not paying attention, man. They're not seeking, you know, knowledge. They're not seeking wisdom. They're not fearing Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shai, which the scriptures tells you that, that for all these things, they should not turn from their scourges, man. And that's why the, that's why the Lord said he's going to come like a thief in the night. Because it wasn't going to be just some snap of the finger and then all of a sudden famine was going to, you know, occur. You know, uh, all of a sudden, you know, a World War III was going to happen. You know, snap of the finger, all of a sudden the, the chip is just going to be presented. No, everything happens in a dispensation of time, man. Everything happens systematically, okay? But now are the times of uh, the ones who see, all right, Shalaki, the ones who don't see, now is the time of, 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 of all these things lining up, but people don't get it. People are not seeing it, man. All right? Even though the Lord still has his prophets out there warning them, letting you, letting, letting them know these things are happening, but it's only for the elect, man. It's only for ones of us that see, the you know, ones that us that uh, uh, believe on the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, but this right here is evidently, it's crystal clear what this is leading unto, man. This is leading unto a famine. Okay, a great famine is about to hit this place, man. Un undoubtedly, there's going to be a famine of, of, of food. Okay. A famine of meat. This is this this article is a hundred percent proof that this is happening. Millions of meat is going to be uh, is going to disappear from the supply chain, and that has and that is going to have what lead to a shortage in the grocery stores, man. Okay, these grocery stores just doesn't magically have food in them. It it has it goes through a process. Okay, it goes it starts from from the farms. All right, those animals that are on the farms all the way up. To the grocery stores, there's a whole process that happens, man. It's called a supply chain. And the supply chain, as we just read, is what? The supply chain is breaking, okay? And, 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 and if it's breaking, okay, with no signs of fixing it, what is going to, is going to lead into a, a negative effect for you people, man, okay? And mainly you Israelites because a lot of Israel are stuck in dense, high density, you know, are, are, you know, grew up, are, are live in high densely populated areas, okay, where there's going to be more people than there's going to be food, okay? There's going to be more people than there's going to be food. And what is that going to lead to? That's going to lead to rioting. That's going to lead to, hey, the scriptures tells you this, man. Let me get that real quick because I just typed in famine and, and you know, there's plenty of scriptures that, that pop up with famine. But when you have more of a supply, I mean, we have more of a demand than you have a supply, what is it? What are people going to do? You think people are just going to wait their turn? People are just going to say, oh, you know what? I guess I just didn't get it this day. You know, I'll come back tomorrow. I'll come back. And it's not even going to be tomorrow. I'll come back two or three weeks later, okay, and, and hope I can get some, uh, you know, get some food uh, uh, the next time around. No, that's not what's going to happen, man. People are going to resort, resort into this. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Yeah, because people... They still have this pride, this, this this sense of pride about themselves, okay? You know, people don't have com camaraderie. They don't have, you know, love for one another. The love for many is waxing cold and, 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 and worse and worse, man, all right? So when you add in famine, when you add in hunger into the fact that the spirit of, of people are already uh, uh, evil, okay, uh, evil lies already towards one another, it's going to just accumulate into just straight up 
all out anarchy, man. And this is what's going to happen because you're going to have a large supply. I mean, a large demand and a limited supply. What is going to what is going to occur? Verse 19. And a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword for and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. OK, you see that. They're going to what spoil their goods, goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So when we go into this article, it's not it's not something that's far fetched. It's not something that is a conspiracy. All right. Conspiracy theory. This is actually what is occurring, man. This is why people are going to spoil their goods. This is why there's going to be a lack of bread. This is why there's going to be famine, because you have millions of meat products that is not going to be distributed in the supply chain. The supply chain is breaking. Millions of meat are not going to go into the stores uh, in the grocery stores, man. So you're going to see a lack of food, a.k.a. famine. All right. It says. Um, asked about CNN, asked by CNN about those claims, Tyson's food, uh, foods, Tyson Foods said that the plants were sanitized daily. And Tyson, the chairman, wrote in Sunday's advertisement that the company has taken steps to protect its workers, including taking their temperatures and requiring face masks in all of their facilities. He added that the company is paying out bonuses to frontline workers and truckers, as well as donating food in local communities. OK, and, and it's going to get to the point where these um, these bonuses are not going to be worth much, man. OK, they're not going to be worth anything. And it's going to and, and, and these workers and these truckers, they're going to get to the point where they're going to say, look, it's better for us not to even go to work, man. All right. It's safer for us to stay home or to hell with going to work. You see, everything is going to be disrupted. Everything, everything that people has their, you know, you know, this can never happen. Oh, this can never happen. All that is going to happen. Everything that you thought was never going never could happen in Babylon. It's going to happen in 10 times worse, man, because of your pride. That's why the scripture says that because of the pride. Men shall be afraid because of their pride. Great miseries are going to come upon this earth because people think that this place can't be touched, man. They think that the Lord doesn't have a controversy with the inhabitants of, of, of this of this uh, uh, of this world, of this age. They think that America is just going to continue just to be this this wicked ass uh, a kingdom and that the, the that the righteous father, our father. All right. The power of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the only living power is not going to do anything about it, man. But little do you know, he has a he has his greatest wrath set forth for this place, man. The greatest destruction is going to be set forth for this place. And one of those ways that destruction is going to come by is going to come by famine, man. OK, and so it says some of the country's largest ab uh, abattoirs, all right, abattoirs, processing plants or slaughterhouses. That's what an abattoir is, has been forced to cease operations temporarily after thousands of employees across the country have tested positive for, for the virus. All right. This pandemic. OK, because I personally and I speak as a man, I believe that there is a pestilence. But I believe also that this country it, it has exacerbated, you know, the effects of it, man. OK. And they have used the the the, the, the plant, the, uh, the the coronavirus, the COVID-19 to push forth their agenda, man. OK. So all in all, this the, the, the pestilences, the plagues were going to hit, are going to hit. But this devil. Being the devil that he is, using his wiles, using his cunning arts, his deceit, his trickery, has used this to catapult, catapult his uh, his agenda, man, which is trying to push forth that uh, 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 new world order, okay, by way of ultimately pushing forth that his mark, the mark of the beast. But all these things are are are, are lining up with with biblical pro prophecy, man, okay. All these things of the of the the, the, the shortage of food. You know, you go to the grocery store, people are now hoping that there's food in a grocery store, the, the things that they that they desire to obtain, man. OK, some people are buying things that they don't they necess necess uh, necessarily don't even want, but they just buying it because they see that the stuff that they do want, they, it's not there. So they say, well, I might as well just grab this. I might as well just grab that. All this is all this is leading into that ultimate famines that is going to be widespread, man. OK. And that famine, once that famine hit, people are going to go bonkers, man, because here in America, people are not accustomed to going without eating, man. That's one thing that America, all right, if you got money, that's one thing you could do here in Babylon. You could eat. 
Okay, whether it be fast food, whether it be uh, you know uh, convenience stores, you could get food at a at a at a uh, at a uh, um, gas station, man. Okay, you go to all these restaurants. Every other street, there's a, a block. There's a restaurant. Okay, you got DoorDash, Uber Eats. Everything is about a cons- consumption in Babylon. So when it gets to the point where food is not readily available here, people are not used to that. They're not used to that having that thought process, man. And what is going to happen? <laughs> People's houses are going to be ransacked for lack of bread. It says pork processing plants have been hit especially hard, and that's a spirit, man. Because our people, right, the 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 you Israelites aren't even supposed to be eating pork, okay? So the ones who are in the know, the ones who try to keep the law, statute, commandments, all right, the ones that fear Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, this pork processing plant being being hit hard doesn't affect us, man. But you got a lot of our our people that are heavy into eating and consuming pork, man. At Babylon the Great as a whole, pork is the number one uh, food that a uh, number one meat that is that 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 is being eaten, man, in Babylon. So it says, with three of the largest in the United States going off indefinitely, call lo yahu bashim shy, man. So that's a lot of food, a lot of meat that is not going to be out on these on these um in, in these stores, man. Because three of the largest uh, pork processing plants are going offline. It says Smithsfield Foods in uh, Seahawks uh, Falls, South Dakota. Uh, JBS Pork Processing in Wash in Worthington, Minnesota. And the Tyson's plant in Waterloo, Iowa. Together, the three plants account approximately for 15% of pork production. So now, what is that? 15% less of food is going to be, of pork specifically, are going to be not in these stores, man. Understand and believe that is going to take a, a, a direct effect on the population, man. Okay? On the supply. Okay? And that's going to then have a domino effect on the people's minds. Okay, people are going to start to get uh, uh, basically take matters into their own hand. They're going to start looking at their neighbors and, and ransacking their houses for the food. Okay, so let me um, let's get some scriptures. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, verse forty-nine. It says, "I will send plagues upon thee: widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence." To waste thy houses and to uh, with destruction and death, man. That's the visitation of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's the day of the Lord. That's the time that we're in. Okay, the Lord is sending these plagues, and the scriptures tells you if the Lord send the plagues, you know who can drive them back? Nobody. All right. So let's look up some uh, more scriptures. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter fifteen, verse two, and it shall come to pass if if they say unto thee, whither shall we go forth? Then that then thou shalt say to them, Thus saith Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the for, for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. So you got people getting thrown in these concentration camps, people just getting uh killed with the sword, whether it be a machete, whether it be a gun, all right, which is a modern day sword, okay. People just being put to death, you know, uh, uh, however, okay, by the pestilences, all right, by the wild teeth of the wild beasts, okay, and then you got the famine, which the scripture tells you, actually, let me get that too, um, that it's better to uh, die die by hunger than, than to the sword, actually, I just quoted, you know, it's in the book of Lamentation, it's better to die by the sword, I should say, than, than, than for hunger, okay, because that hunger is a slow, painful, agonizing death, man, and that anguish is coming upon the inhabitants of this place, man. All right, the wicked of, of this world. But the Lord said that what? The ones who trust in him, we shall laugh in the day of famine. Okay? Uh, second, uh, this is Jeremiah 16, verse 4. They shall die of grievous deaths, and they shall not be lamented. All right, and you see how many, you know, they, they're, they're making frozen, you know, refrigerated morgues, okay, uh, mass uh, graves because of this, of this just one uh, pandemic, so-called plan, uh, pandemic, which I call it a plandemic. OK, this is just one pestilence and they're doing all these measures. Imagine if you have multiple uh, 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 plagues, man. And then on top of that, the famines and on top of that, the social unrest, the, the Egyptian against the Egyptian. OK, the kingdom, the nations versus nation. This is going to be death left and right, man. Up, down, left, right. OK, everywhere you see this is going to be death, man. That's why the scripture tells you 
right here it says neither shall there be neither shall they be buried because they're already having an influx all right the these morgues and these uh funeral homes can't even hold the amount of people that are dying now and it's only been what about i think they said about fifty three thousand people has died in america babylon so far okay and that's just off of one plague when the lord let loose on this place it's going to be so much death that they're not going to be lamented or buried you're not gonna have time to lament man you're not gonna have time to be there to be saddened over somebody's dying because why because Death is going to be right around the corner for your ass, man, if you're not protected and covered by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. That's why the scriptures tells us in the book of Daniel that what? That then shall that uh, Michael, that prince, uh, great prince, stand up for thy people. We want to need divine intervention during these times, man, because we're not even going to be able to save ourselves. We're not going to be able to escape death through our own uh, our own selves, man. It's only going to be by way of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, his grace and his mercy. That's why we're telling you to repent now, man, while you still got time to, because the time is surely running out, okay? And when the Lord starts to let loose, when the Lord brings his wrath upon you, can no man deliver you, all right? No man can deliver from the from the day of destruction, man, when the Lord when the Lord brings his His uh, His uh wrath upon his place. Let loose with these uh, spirits of vengeance, okay? It says, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth, and they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. Yeah, because you leave a dead carcass out, you're gonna have uh, vultures, man. You got, we got, especially here in in, uh, in uh, Jersey, you got a lot of turkey vultures that be out here, man. Okay, you got hawks, whatever. Okay, uh, uh, eagles. All these are, you know, uh, fowls that eat meat. And your and your carcass is going to be what they're going to eat, man. And then and then these wild um. These wild beasts too, coyotes, all right, mountain lions, bobcats, they're going to be all out, man. You got a lot of these uh, uh, zoos, these um, zoos are closed down, so these animals, they're going to be let loose too, and they're going to be seeking seeking food as well, man. And who's going to be the food? These <laughs> The people, the caucuses, and even some of the, the people that are alive. It told you that uh, in, in Jeremiah the 15 in the third verse, man, that teeth the wild beasts are going to be, uh, um, you know, are going to be uh, 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 out here, man. Okay, so what else we got? Uh, I believe there was one. It's lucky. There was something in, I believe, the book of Psalms that I want to grab. Yeah, the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 19. It says, and they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. I'm going to start at verse um, 18. Yahweh, Yahweh knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Yeah, because even in the book of uh, 2 Peter, it tells you that the Lord knows how to deliver, okay, uh, uh, the righteous. And, uh, um, you know, the Lord basically knows how to deliver the, the righteous from temptation, man. So the temptation of uh, of of the famine, the Lord going to knows the, knows a hundred percent how to deliver us from those days, man. You know we might not know how we're going to be delivered, but if we be a part of that elect, if the, if we you know be numbered amongst the the the, the children of the Most High, we're going to be delivered, man. And the Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. All right, evil meaning bad, the ill time, man. Okay. And when the time of, of, of the death, the bloodshed, the pestilence, the famine, we're not going to be ashamed during that time, man. Why? Because the Lord said in the, the book of Isaiah, 66th chapter or the 65th chapter, my servants shall eat. It says it right here. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Okay? So we're going to be satisfied, Lord willing, we be once again, you know, we, we be a part of that number. We have confidence. We have faith that we are a part of that number. All right? But we don't know for sure. But we believe that we are, that we shall be uh, uh, satisfied during that time. But that's only an exclusive, <laughs> an exclusive, uh, uh, um, reserved amount of people, man. All right. So let me get this in the book of the book of uh, Luke, chapter twenty-one, verse eleven. And and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, and and fearful sights shall be. Ashlaki, and fearful and fearful sights and great signs shall shall there be from heaven. You see? 
So there's going to be famines. This is what Red Letter, Yahweh Shai said that all these things were going to happen, you know, before he comes, man. All right. Verse seven says, and they asked him saying, master, what shall these things be? When shall these things be? And what shall, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And one of the signs are the earthquakes and the famines. Okay. That's one of the signs. All right. So this is, um, let me get the apocrypha. Second Ezra 15 verse five, behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction for the, in, for wickedness has greatly, ex, greatly, so like you, for wickedness had exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. All right. So the, one of the plagues that the Lord is bringing is, is the famine, man. So when you see in these articles like this, understand that this is a hundred percent sent from the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai working on a, working on this world, man. Okay, the wrath of the Lord is being set forth, and it's not going to return until it has accomplished that which is secret, secret, which is what the, the bringing the destruction, bringing the death of people. Okay, and that's going to be by one of the ways is going to be by famine, man. That's what this famine is to accomplish. It's to accomplish bringing death. Point blank. Period. Second Ezra 16, verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great evils. All right. So like the beginning of famines and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. And what shall I do when these evils shall come? All right. So this is only the beginning of famine. But understand that it's not it's not going to just end with this. It's not going to just be a couple of, uh, you know, processing plans get closed down and then. You know, later everything just swept under the rug. No, man, we are in the we are in the time of the visitation of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, we're in the time of the Lord's wrath, and it's only going to get worse. Just like during the time of ancient Egypt, it only got worse until Egypt was uh, utterly destroyed. The same thing with this modern day Egypt, man. All right, but the scriptures tell you that this Egypt is going to be destroyed way worse than last Egypt, man. It says, "Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish." It's going to be it's going to be anguishing to be in, in to be in famine, man. It's going to hurt. All right. It's going to be hurtful, painful. It says are sent for scourges for amendment. So all these things you're supposed to you hear these things, you're supposed to take heed. All right. And repent, man. You're supposed to get your, your house in order when you're hearing these things, man. When you hear the words for, of the how Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai from the prophets, man. This isn't my warning. OK, the Lord said, give them warning from me. I'm warning you. We know the the prophets are warning the, the 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 Israelites. All right, really the elect, but the ones who are not yet, you know, in that mindset to wake up because you don't have time left, man. Okay, the time is running short. You got to get serious about turning your life around and repenting and getting right with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai right now, man. All right, right now. There's no tomorrow. There's no a couple hours. Right now, as you hear these words, man. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, uh, chapter, what did I want? It's 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 22. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape of the hunger shall the sword destroy. So, and, and it's not just in Babylon either, man, because I did a video um, a couple days ago. It tells you that a lot of countries... Because of the of the of the uh, restrictions of exports, a lot of countries are going to go hungry as well, man. So it's not just here in Babylon. It's all this is the the the, the scripture says woe into the world and the inhabitants thereof, man. Okay, but Babylon the Great is going to have the greatest the greatest uh, 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 wrath. But the the wrath is going to, is, is going to cross all the four corners of the earth, man. Okay, nobody's going to escape these things. Nobody can escape the 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 hand of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. The only way you can run, the only way you can be safe is running into that strong tower. All right, but um, yeah. So uh, yeah, that that's pretty much it, man. Okay, that's pretty much it. Hey, actually, let me get one more just for the uh, hopeful elect out there, because even though these things are happening, we know that our trust. You know, we're not to be afraid. We're not to be fearful, even though we're going to see some things that is going to be fearful. We're going to see some things that you know to the naked eye. To the ones who do not walk by by uh, faith, 
that it was it was shaking up your shaking up your foundation. But our foundation is firm, man. Our foundation is sure because we stand on the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, and if your Lord said that we're going to be delivered from these things, then then you better believe that we're going to be we're going to be delivered, man. Okay, and even if it's not, as Job said, you know, uh, um, though he slay me, yet shall I maintain my trust in him. And that's the mindset you got to have. That's the mindset of somebody that is going to be delivered. Okay, the fact that you're you're you are okay with the Lord destroying you. Okay, okay, during these times, man. You're, you're still going to trust in the Lord even if you do get destroyed. That's who the ones who the Lord is going to deliver, okay? Because you have men that are going to claim that they trust the Lord, but when it comes to, the, to putting your life on the line, people are going to renege on that trust, man. They want to turn back from that trust, and they're going to trust in, 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 in Esau. They're going to trust in taking that chip, you see? And that's who the ones that the Lord are going to destroy. But it's the ones who got that faithful unto death, that's who the Lord is going to deliver during these times, man. Because some of us might even be presented with death right in our faces. Not saying that we're going to have to taste the death, but it may be, be, uh, be presented with, with be, uh, presented with this with it in our faces. And we're going to have to be able to still stand strong and stand faithful even to that very last second, man. Okay? Job chapter 5, verse uh, 19. And he shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yeah, in seven shall no evil touch thee. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in the war from the power of the sword. You see? So famine is coming, man. That is coming. And as you see, as you see, it's all happening right now, man. Okay? That you should know perfectly. If you're watching, if you're paying attention, if you're, if you're being sober-minded, you see clearly that we are, we are in the days of famine, man. And this is just one more article just to prove that. Okay? So, you know, with that, Lord willing, this was uh, edifying unto the elect, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right? We know that these things are coming to pass. We know Jacob's trouble is at hand, is here. But the Lord said what? That he shall, that he shall be saved out of it, man. And everybody everybody else is, going, is, is hey, <laughs> if you don't get right now, man, you got a lot of wrong coming for you, man. Okay? And you shall reap that which you have sowed. Okay? You're going to be, a, you're going to be rewarded according to your works, man. So with that, call Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Shalom.